Good morning, Stitchy people. It is uh, Thursday morning when I'm filming this. I'm trying to get this in before I get started on work. Um, I'm working from home. I know some of you are probably in that same position. Um, but anyway, good morning. I hope you're doing well. Uh, the world is still weird, but we are still here. So cheers to that. Uh, I have my Pusheen mug this morning with some uh, strangely sweet coffee. I've been trying a different non-sugar sweetener and not loving it. Anyway, I'm also going to apologize in advance because the cats are especially crazy this morning. For some reason, they are most active before, um, like between 7 and 10 a.m. I don't know why. Um, cats are supposed to be nocturnal as far as I know. These guys sleep all night, but they get crazy when I come down to try to work in the morning. So, um, and they are currently chasing each other around the house and scratching things. So, <clears throat> there could be crashes and booms. Be prepared. <laughs> uh, for those of you who have been watching for a while and are coming back, thank you so much for watching. And for those of you who are brand new, welcome. Happy to have you. Um, the numbers keep going up and it's really exciting to be able to share all of my random stuff with you people. So <laughs> I'm very happy to have you here. So as I said, it's, uh, it's Thursday morning. It is April 23rd. Um, this will probably get posted tomorrow. So today is actually the day before 24 hours of cross stitch weekend, marathon weekend. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about my plans for that in a few minutes. Um, but before we get to that, let's talk about what have I been listening to? What am I listening to? Um, so far, um, and it's actually, it's been slightly less than two weeks since we chatted last. And in that time, I have not actually listened to an audiobook yet, still. I've mostly been listening to Netflix. So, um, not sure why I'm actually really starting to get bored of television in general. So I really need to do something different to put in my ears. But I did finish the entire series of Santa Clarita Diet. If you have not checked it out, um, what I hear is that they canceled it after the third season, which is a shame because it did end on, on a cliffhanger and there's lots of unanswered questions. But it's an, it's an interesting little show. It's bizarre. And there are some, um, it's, it's quirky and kitschy and uh, it stars Drew Barrymore and I forget the male lead's name, but uh, they have this way of talking that can be incredibly annoying and grating, but at the same time, they're sort of jabbing fun at themselves the entire time. So it's kind of, it's, it's kind of hilarious. I found myself laughing out loud a number of times. So. The episodes are like 30 minutes long. It's got a little bit of gore. I'll worry, warn you about that. Um, it does have some gore, but it's pretty funny and the actors are pretty great. Um, so, especially the, the two teenage leads, they're fantastic. Love them. I'm gonna have to find other stuff that they're in. So anyway, that's what I've been listening to <laughs> since I have that on while I'm working or while I'm uh, stitching or doing other stuff. Um, that's pretty much what I've been listening to. So uh, let's talk about whips. <coughs> We'll talk about whips and then we'll talk about some happy mail and some purchases and then 24 hours of cross stitch and mania and then at the very end i will do some nitty stuff and i'll nitty nitty fiber stuff um and i will uh, i'll warn you about that in case you want to tune away once i get to the knitting so uh, i'm going to try to keep this short because it has only been like a week and a half but you know me <laughs> So I've only worked on one whip. This was a new start and a whip. Um, I think I mentioned last time that the um, Chinese Zodiac um, Stitch Along by Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery was starting on April 15th. So um, I purchased the kit, I showed that last time, and um, they, they dropped the first pattern, the first clue. Um, was it just last week? I guess it. I guess it was just last week. Maybe it was the week before. Time has no meaning anymore. <laughs> I don't know if that's true for you, but it's certainly true for me. So anyway, pattern dropped. I started it that night. Um, I haven't quite finished the first clue, but here is where I am. And I will tell you, I was ha unbeknownst to um, Heike at Stone Cold Coffee Crafts, I was having a competition with her. Um, I lost. <laughs> and she didn't know that there was a race, but I, <laughs> I had decided that there was a race. Because, um, you know, it doesn't help that she has a five-hour edge on me um, in a lot of respects because she lives in Germany, so she's five hours ahead. 
but um, you know, we both started the same day and we were kind of right on pace until she got to the little animals up here and then zoom she was done and I was like, oh, uh, um, yeah, no. <laughs> um, but this piece, the centerpiece, this Chinese knot is fantastic. I loved stitching this. This was really, really cool. And this is done in etoile, etoile that shiny fuzzy um, fiber that they included with the kit. Um, and so this is the bulk of the stitching. There is, when it's finished, there's going to be one more little animal right here. Um, so that'll be the first clue finished. So hoping to finish that. Um, preferably today, if at all possible, so that this will be done until May 15th and um, and I won't have to worry about it for 24 hours of cross stitch. So that is that is my whip. That's all the whips that are fit to whip this week. So I um, <clears throat> haven't done any other cross stitching besides that, but um, but that's been that's been fun. Um, I actually haven't stitched at all since Sunday, I think. So, um, so yeah, this week has been a bust for cross stitching. I've been into a whole bunch of different stuff, some, some stuff for my business after work and, and, um, doing some knitting and things like that. So a lot of places my brain has been this week. Happy mail. Literally the day, like as soon as I was editing the last video, I got my happy mail from the latest Kate. So I have that to show you. But I also started following somebody new to me on um, on Instagram. Um, she does these fantastics, fantastic, fantastics, fantastic um, sort of Zen Doodle designs. And she is also on Patreon. And so she has. Um, <clears throat> So she, you can join at various levels and she has a sticker club basically with her Patreon. So if you sign up for various levels, you get different numbers of stickers and you get big ones and little ones and all this sort of stuff. So this is my first month having signed up as a um, Patreon and she is Zenspired Designs on Instagram. I'll try to remember to, to link her below. Um, Zenspired Designs is her business name. And she's fantastic. She sent me this um, gorgeous little purple envelope. And this month, um, I think I'm, I think I'm at the lowest level or like the first level that gets you stickers. Um, and so I got two. I think these are considered large stickers. So she sent me a J, since my name is J. <laughs> I'm assuming that was totally on purpose. And if it wasn't, then, you know, yay for you for, <laughs> for just randomly getting the right letter. Um, and then this little typewriter that says, hello, beautiful. And it's hard to see. I'm not going to mess with the focus a whole lot. It's hard to see, but there are actually um, little tiny um, doodles inside. Pardon me. I didn't realize that my, I, I, pulled off a piece of my nail the other day and it's not looking real great. I'll try to keep that off camera. It's got these tiny little doodles within the doodle, uh, which I think are fantastic. So you should totally check her out on Instagram, Zenspire Designs. And, um, and I also got a small sticker. I got two larges and a small. Look at that little llama. Look at him. He's so cute. And these are no cheap stickers. Let me tell you, these are like, um, I think they're like, they might be vinyl. They have a, a nice thick um, sort of plasticky quality to them. So, I mean, these are nice. These are really nice stickers. So if you like stickers, check her out. If you like these kinds of designs, which I do, I love these kinds of designs, um, check her out. She's fantastic. So <clears throat> that's a little bit of happy mail from a new person that I'm following on Instagram and Patreon. And then my latest Kate, love latest Kate, love, love, love. Um, follow her on Instagram and Facebook and all the places because she's my favorite. Um, I love the cute little animals and she, um, she does, um, brain freeze. She does polls, like surveys once a month of her, um, Patreon members to see what kind of animals they want her to draw that month. So she'll usually pick an art style or a color family or something like that. And she'll say, this is, this is the color I'm going to use. What animals do you want to see this month? So for this month's Patreon pack, um, <coughs> excuse me, I've got this one with the little goats. Oh, goats are so cute. When it's hard to find kindness, I will make it myself. How cute is that? 
I actually, I really want to contact her and see if she'd let me make this into a cross stitch pattern. Not necessarily for sale, but just because I think that would be so cute. So cute. Um, <clears throat> and then this one I actually saw on Instagram and fell in love with it. So it's, um, I'm going to show it to you and then I'm going to pull it down and read it to you because it's, it's super cute. So it's like this super, super kind of chibi little bunny rabbit dude. <clears throat> and of course you can pause this and read it yourself, but I'm going to read it to you. So the first frame says, hey, just popping in to let you know you are not failing. You're actually doing a good job holding it all together. Your anxiety is doing you a bamboozle. Truthfully, you're doing fine. You're pretty great. And we're lucky you're around. That's fantastic. Love it. And she's always, I don't know, like most days when I see whatever her latest doodle is, it is perfect for whatever I'm feeling that day. And this was definitely true of this one. So just remember during all this craziness, when you're feeling weird, when you're feeling angry, sad, upset, whatever, just remember your anxiety is doing you a bamboozle. You're fantastic. We're all happy you're here. Remember that. So, it's one of my favorites. And also, this time, instead of a sticker, she did a magnet. How cute! It's a hedgehog! You are capable. You can do this. Yes. Fantastic. Love latest Kate. Favorite, favorite. So, always remember, we're, we're glad you're here, we're lucky you're here, and you are capable. Hedgehog says so. <laughs> okay, so that's my happy meal. Um, let's see. Let's talk about stuff that I bought. I didn't, well, I have bought a lot of stuff. Um, I haven't received a lot of stuff. Everything's moving slower than usual. Um, <clears throat> at least when it comes to some of the... I don't know. Everything's just moving slower than usual. <laughs> I'm finding that the, the smaller independent businesses are actually moving much faster um, because since a lot of these folks either work just with family or they work out of their homes, um, they're not being as affected by um, the shutdowns and things like that as some of the rest of the world. And so, um, you know, bigger companies that have lots of employees are, are really feeling it right now but these smaller businesses that can break up their their processes or who are already quarantining together anyway they're doing pretty great and I've been trying to remember to thank folks when I'm purchasing um, because I think it's important to let them know that it's important to us that they're still working um, so I'm trying to support small um, it's hard to support local there's not a lot of um, crafty businesses near me, though I did, I'll talk about it more in the Yarny section, I did find a, um, I found a semi-local yarn dyer, and I'm going to be purchasing some yarn from her soon, so that's fun. Um, <clears throat> so, purchases that are still on the way, I actually think, I think it's going to be here today, but I didn't want to wait to film. Um, my um, Medusa the Doll Maker Gamer Nouveau cross stitch. I think, I think it's in the mail today. I think it's scheduled to be delivered today. I know Gecko Rouge sent it like a week ago, which was faster than I expected, because right after, right after I filmed last and I talked about, oh, it it might be three or four, or six months, or you know, three or four weeks, six months, whatever. Um, not in a rush. Um, I actually saw on their Facebook page that um, they, they, they posted a ton of, a picture of a ton of kits that they had kitted up and were sending out the next day. And there were a bunch of Gamer Nouveaus and I was like, ooh, I hope one of those is mine. And uh, funnily enough, one of the folks um, at Gecko Rouge was like, yes, one of those is yours. And I was like, oh, really? Because <laughs> it had been less than a week since I, <laughs> since I purchased it. And so um, they already shipped it out. And um, I saw the tracking number in my informed delivery today, and it looked like a UK tracking number. And there's only one other thing that I've ordered from the UK, and I just ordered it yesterday, so I know that's not arriving today. <laughs> so that's coming. Um, I have more color and cotton coming. Um, Misty Fabric of the Month, Brandy Fabric of the Month, and I do have a Brandy order. Um, I got a couple of pieces of um, 
a couple of pieces of fabric from her last week. My brain is so slow. Um, got a, uh, uh, in her Friday night fight night, I actually completely forgot about the Friday night thing, and I checked in the next day, and there were actually still some some pieces of fabric available, so that was kind of sweet. And then I ended up uh, winning uh, one of her pattern giveaways, so that was fantastic. So um, that should be in the mail probably today or tomorrow she'll be sending that. And then what else is still to come? I think that's most of it. I did the order I placed yesterday from the UK, um, Bags Plus, because I need more flippy things. Um, <laughs> my brain just <laughs> shut down. <laughs> Floss Buddies. Floss Buddy Flips. I love those. Um, I did actually order one larger one this time. I had wanted to get a, I didn't want to get the 25 slot ones because um, I felt like those are too big for most projects, but the 12 slot ones are actually slightly too small for most projects. The 16s are about right, um, but she didn't have a lot uh, on offer at the time. And I waited a few days and waited a few days, and then a couple of the ones I was interested in disappeared. So I was like, okay, fine. So I got, <laughs> I got one 16 slaughter and I think three 12 uh, slot floss buddy flips. So, or Bendy Flips, I think is what she calls them because of Michelle Bendy. Um, but anyway, so um, those will be here someday. Um, <clears throat> I literally just ordered it yesterday, so I don't know when Karina will be able to, to send those. Um, it is her second anniversary next month, so you should skip over to her Instagram and you should congratulate her on her two years of fantastic products. Okay, so that's all the stuff that's on order, which you probably didn't care about because it's not here to see. But here are the things that I have received. Um, I recently purchased some more um, Kathy Davidson Dying for Cross Stitch um, flosses and fabrics. And I'm going to do the flosses first only because they're sitting on top of the fabrics and it makes life easier for me. So, um, and I will say, Kathy has started a new thing for her flosses. So if you're having trouble getting flosses on Sundays, which trust me, it's become a madhouse. Um, if you're having trouble getting those me pleases in, what she's going to do is once a month, she's going to re-offer all of the cotton dyed, um, the cotton floss colorways. Um, as long as they aren't speckled or ice dye, she will re-offer them when she does her fabric of the month post. And you can order flosses that you missed out on. Or you can just wait till the end of the month and order flosses instead of stressing out about trying to meet please stuff, which is probably what I'm going to do. So, <clears throat> but last time I actually caught um, some flosses on a Sunday, I got these. And the light's all off, so I'm not even going to try to talk about it this time, but it's kind of peachy, orangey on the top. Um, coral kind of color and then it fades into purple and pink it's really cool I love that and then I got these fantastic bright pink it's coming out way way pink um, but this is almost a day glow pink so that's that's pretty accurate <laughs> and I got I'm just gonna show you one of these I actually bought four of these um, which are these nice uh, variegated trying to figure out where you can see it best. Focus. And look, it's like my hair color. <laughs> uh, variegated browns and yellows, which will be nice. Um, I actually have a pattern I'm probably going to work on in Mania that I think this would be really good for. So I got four skeins of that. I usually will get, uh, these are 10 yard skeins, um, and the bigger ones are 50 yard skeins. I usually will get at least four of these or two of the big ones just because I want to make sure I have plenty of that color when I buy them. And then I got two skeins of her silk flosses. These will not be available at the end of the month. Um, her silks, uh, she feels like she hasn't gotten that technique down to be able to recreate colorways. So the silks are available when she posts them on a Sunday and that's it. So if you love silk, make sure you're still going in to me please your silk. So these are actually two different purples. So they're not, this one's not in shadow. It actually is darker. This one. <laughs> um, but yeah, two, two slightly different purple colorways um, for flosses. 
and then I had a couple of really cool fabrics. So I actually bought a piece of 18 count Ada, which I don't do often. Um, the color appeared more teal in the picture than it really came out, but it's still a really nice piece. I got this thinking I might use it for the unicorn tapestry pattern by Tiny Modernist. And I think it would be, it looks really kind of like a pale blue, um, a baby sky blue on camera, <clears throat> but it really is a little bit more, it's a little bit more teal than that. But I do actually have um, a piece of fabric, Misty um, of Mystic Hand Dyed Fabrics has done a special color for the unicorn tapestry pattern. And I have ordered a piece of that as well. I think I've ordered 36 count linen, I think, because I wanted a high count for that. So um, that should be a like a more intense teal blue kind of color. So regardless, this is a gorgeous piece of fabric. I am happy to use that for something. And then this was the super shocker. So um, last week, Kathy offered, um, I think it was last week, might have been the week before. She offered several pieces of ice dyed fabrics um, and they were gorgeous and reminded me of like irises and lilacs and orchids. Um, <clears throat> and I kept trying to get a piece and kept trying to get a piece and people kept me pleasing first and I was getting frustrated. And then lo and behold, she put up this piece of 40 count fabric that was ice dyed. And I will tell you when I saw the picture, I thought it had more yellow green in it than it turns out it did. And I'm happy that that's the case that it doesn't have as much yellow green because um, I wasn't as in love with it as I was with some of the other pieces, but it was the first one I could me please. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'll take it. Um, and then I got it and oh my gosh, and this camera is not even going to do it any justice, but it's fantastic. And it turns out too, the other super lucky thing, this is not a piece of linen. This is a piece of Lugana. A 40 count Lugana, how fantastic. It actually feels like a really fine um, table napkin, <laughs> if you can believe it. It is so soft. Um, I mean, it's like super fine, super fine um, fabric. So I have no idea what I'm gonna stitch on this, but it is gorgeous, it is fantastic. I am so excited. Um, and I'm gonna have to find something super, super special. I, what I really wanna do, and I have no idea what this is gonna end up being. What I really wanna do is um, do some kind of commemorative piece to my mother on this because, um, like I said, it reminds me of Iris's and her name was Iris. So um, it makes me, the gorgeous color makes me think of her, even though yellow is her favorite color and purple is my favorite color. Um, it reminds me of her, so I wanna do something to think of her on that. And this is a 25 by 25 piece of fabric, so I can do anything I want to on this. This is fantastic. Love it. Love it. Love it. <clears throat> so those are all the purchases or the cross stitch purchases that I have here with me. So that's it for that. Wow, we're already at 23 minutes. I, I can't do things short. <laughs> We'll see if I can get through the rest of it in 10 minutes. I doubt it. Um, anyway, <laughs> so let's talk, uh, let's talk 24 hours of cross stitch. So uh, the marathon is basically set up. Um, you can, you really can do it any way you want to. The fun thing about most of these things, and I know a lot of people will be like, will ask, um, you know, how, what are the rules? How am I supposed, am I allowed to do this? Can I do this? Well, the, the truth is for any of these things, whether it's, mania, it's 24 hours of cross stitch, um, it's any hashtag sal, whatever, for all of these, you can play by your own rules. I mean, there will be, whoever creates it will have an idea of what they want to accomplish or what they want it to look like. But the reality is that you're doing it in your own home by yourself and you don't have to follow anybody else's rules. Um, it's all about what you want to do. So. Um, and especially, that's especially true for anything that Jen Lee does. She really, she sets things up to try to make things as stress-free as possible. So it's all, you know, whatever works for you. Um, so the idea is to stitch for 24 hours over the course of the weekend. Now, some people like to go hardcore, hashtag team no sleep, and they like to do their 24 hours in one haul, 
stitch for 24 hours straight. No breaks, no sleep, nothing. Um, and if that's your bag, more power to you. Um, some of us, and I do say some of us, um, are have more of a goal of doing 24 hours across the weekend. So the weekend starts, um, <clears throat> technically starts midnight Friday. Um, so tonight, 12.01, um, sorry, 11, after 11.59 p.m. on Thursday night, it will be 24 hours of cross stitch weekend. So you have from then until 11.59 um, p.m. Sunday, try to get your 24 hours in during that. Of course, if you don't do 24 hours, nobody's going to come to your house and beat you up. If you do more than 24 hours, nobody's going to come to your house and beat you up. It's, <laughs> you know, it's all about personal goals. Like it's, it's about having an accomplishment for yourself. So if 24 hours is too much for you, that's totally fine. If you want to just make sure that you do 24 minutes of cross stitching, that's totally fine. Whatever success is for you, that's what your goal should be. So, um, which is one of the reasons that I love Jen Lee so much because it's all about let's let's set some goals for ourselves so that we can feel good about what we're doing. So whatever that looks like for you, you do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm try I'm going to try to get 24 hours of stitching in over the course of the weekend. That's my goal, and I'm trying to focus specifically on older whips, um, and as, like mainly my oldest whips. So. <laughs> Um, the first priority, and this shouldn't take terribly long, the first priority is going to be finishing off this little guy. So all I finally have the beading needles. I actually do have the beading needles here in time to do this. So I'm just going to try to get the rest of these beads onto this piece. So I've got maybe a quarter of it done because I got, I'm trying to feel the beads. So I've got those beads and across here. So I just have maybe two thirds actually. I may have a third of it done. So I got about two thirds left to do. So that's going to be the first priority because um, I feel like that's going to be a relatively quick win if I can get the beading needles to work for me. So that's the first priority. <clears throat> and then, and I haven't set specific goals yet. I'm not sure if I will. Um, my main goal is to actually take them out and work on them. So if I get that done at all, I think that will be a success. Um, so I, um, I want to work primarily on this piece. And I'm not sure where, oh, okay, my needle's stuck up in the top there. Um, <clears throat> that's not how you should do your needles, just FYI. Um, I want to work on this piece. Um, I'm not even going to try for a finish because it's, this piece is going to fill this entire thing and then there's more. It's, it's fairly large. I should probably actually put this on a scroll frame, um, but I don't work on it very often, so I don't want it just sitting out. This is literally my oldest whip. It is the oldest whip that still exists in this house. Um, a whip that may have been older, I gave away to one of my wonderful viewers, and I hope she's enjoying that right now. So, um, but I did give that piece away. So this is my oldest whip still existing. So I want to work on this some. Maybe my goal will be to finish out the sun here, because there's not much stitching. There's a little bit there, and then there's the spaces in between, um, <clears throat> and then try to try to finish out the moon as much as possible, but probably not completely finish it out. But definitely this is a big goal for the weekend is to take this out to work on it some. And then the other thing I really want to focus on, uh, and I might be able to get it done this weekend, really. Um, this is, <laughs> and it's not got a lot going on yet. Um, this is a, a whip that I started. Um, this is the Stiach 5 pattern. And it says, um, as for me and my house, we shall. And then the ending that I have chosen to add is um, Obey the Giant Head from Rick and Morty. So um, as you can see, I got it started. And I think I started this in 2018 because I think I started it right after um, actually finishing Stiach 6, uh, which was my first Stiach. Um, <clears throat> can't wait for the new Stiach. This will be Stiach 8. Um, no news yet, but as soon as we have news, I will tell you. And I, um, I'm probably almost 100% going to run a group again this year. Um, actually, probably like 110% I'm going to run a group this year. <laughs> again this year. Sips and Stitches, um, we forgot our second T. So we don't total our T's. <laughs> anyway, um, so Stiach, um, Stiach 5, I want to... Um, I want to get some good work on this, even if I don't finish it. So, um, 
and it's funny because this was and it hasn't been very long but when I first got back into cross stitching I still had this idea that pretty much the only varieties of cross stitch fabric were white Ada, off-white Ada, and oatmeal Ada. <laughs> so part of me is like I'm not sure I'm gonna love stitching on this because this is just plain old white Ada and it's all stiff and sad and I'm like I have so many pretty fabrics now I could put it on a pretty fabric but you know what this is already gridded and it's already in the frame um, and it's already started so you know what I'm just gonna stick with it I'm gonna suck it up and stick with it I'm not gonna restart it just because I have better fabric now um, <clears throat> so those are the main focuses, those two. And then after that, um, the order of priority is um, gonna be finishing up any other older whips that I have before moving on to, um, to um, 2020 stitch alongs. So after those two, after I get sick of them or finish them or whatever, get to whatever point with them, um, then I'll go back to working on this. Um, as you can see, I have no additional progress since last time we talked, but um, I do want to do that. And then once once I am either sick of these um, and or have finished what I want to finish with these, then I will move on to uh, working on my 2020 cells. So <clears throat> the 2020 cells are um, Peppermint Purples, Year of Black Work, Stitch Along, um, Frosted Pumpkin Stitcheries, excuse me, Animal Almanac Stitch Along, Grimm's Fairy Tales uh, by Clouds Factory Stitch Along, Linen and Threads, um, Friends and Family Stitch Along, designed by Fox and Rabbit Designs. I think that's all the Stitch Alongs. It feels like all the Stitch Alongs. <laughs> Oh, and I also have um, the other whip that I have that's not the only stitch along, or the only whip I have that's not a stitch along um, is the Baba Yaga um, by the Witchery, the Wicked, the Witchy Stitcher. <laughs> so I could go back to that if I want to. Um, I'm not sure what I will feel like doing once I get all of, get through all of that stuff. So we'll see. It's pretty much fair game once I have at least I think my main goal, now that I'm thinking about it, I think what I will, I will set myself a target of, I need to work on each old whip for at least one hour, maybe two hours. Once I have done that, then I can move on to other pieces. Um, and pretty much as long as I have touched all of the, the pre-2020 whips for at least two hours, then everything else is fair game. That'll be my rule. And it's on record now, so I can watch this back if I forget what I said, which I will, trust me. So, <clears throat> so that is, that is 24 hours of cross stitch. So um, I know that I'm going to be doing um, a virtual crafty thing with a couple of friends this weekend. Um, so that'll help me stay on task and get some of this cross stitching done. Um, <clears throat> I may also at some point post a, oh my God, what did I do video? <laughs> so I'll try to, I'll try to give you some, some progress stuff over the course of the weekend, um, or at least post some kind of video on Monday or Tuesday, just to give you an idea of how things went. Cause I think it'll be easier to do a rundown if I just kind of do just that instead of trying to mix it in with the next floss tube. So I'm going to try to commit myself to doing that on Monday or Tuesday. Hold me to it. Um, okay, so 24 hours cross stitch. The next thing is mania. Now, um, if you watch Michelle G. Bendy Stitchy, um, she is doing Sania, um, which I think is fantastic. It's sort of along the lines of what I was talking about last time, doing like one new start a week. Um, the additional bit with Sania is that in addition to only doing one new start a week in May, um, you can't do the new start until you have made a certain amount of progress on a current whip. Um, <clears throat> so you set yourself a goal on a current whip. Once you hit that, then you can do the new start at the end of the week. I think that's totally fair. I don't know that I'm going to hold myself to anything like that very stringently. I do want to start a bunch of new stuff, and I feel like maybe if I start it in May, then I will be able to keep going. Um, but a lot of that relies on getting a lot of work done this weekend on some older stuff. Um, 
<clears throat> so we'll see how all of that goes, but I do have a list of things that I'm really interested in starting and a couple of things that I think I, um, I'm almost positive I will start. Um, I found these through Michelle G at Bendy Stitchy. Um, they are Barbara Anna Designs. These are actually free. Um, if you go to, I'll try to, to include the link below. But these are two uh, free patterns that Barbara Anna at Barbara Anna Designs did for um, the Be Well and Stitch, hashtag Be Well and Stitch. Um, this one is actually the second one. It's called Light. It's a fox in a dress. And it's so cute. I just love this. I, I'm not holding it straight. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what it is about this. There is something fantastic about this. I saw Michelle G stitching this and I was like, oh my gosh. Um, and then I found out they were free patterns and I was like, yes, yes, this is happening. So this is actually the second one, but I love her or him. Um, if you're, if you're following Michelle G, um, Michelle G likes to think that maybe this is a, a male fox in a dress, which is totally cool. Um, I, I feel like it's a she, but you know, maybe mine is a she and maybe Michelle G's is a he, who knows. Regardless. Fantastic. Love it. Um, this is the first and companion piece. So this piece came first. This is called the key. This is a goose in a dress. And it's so cute. So, so cute. I don't know what it is about these, these designs. So this one was made first. This is also a free pattern uh, from um, part of the hashtag be well and stitch. Super cute, the key. And then this is, <clears throat> this is the companion piece, the second piece, um, which is light. And you can see that the key, the key is kind of hanging over the fox in this one. Um, so they kind of, so they're connected. So I, I think it's super cute. Um, so I would like to, I'm definitely going to start light. Um, that's a plan to start light in May. Um, if I can, I will also start uh, the key. I'm going to do them backwards because I like the fox that much better. Um, <clears throat> there's also a Be Well and Stitch, hashtag Be Well and Stitch, um, free design from Jeanette Douglas Designs, I believe. Um, that's really, really cool. I was going to show it to you, but really, it's I know it's a free pattern. I can probably show it to you. Let's see if I've got it anywhere where I can reach it. Okay. I just don't want to get into any problems. It is a free pattern, but I can't show it to you without showing you the pattern because there is no... There's no picture of the stitch. So I'm just going to flash it up here real quick. So be one stitch. Um, <clears throat> this is a Jeanette Douglas design. It's free on her website. Um, it's so cute. It's basically just a flower pot. She has a companion piece that is a mini bouquet. So this is a mini bouquet. There's an additional free mini bouquet um, that you can also get on her website. And I, I will probably do at least the Be Well mini bouquet. I may do the other one as well. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not going to use probably any of the called for floss just because um, the design I think will lend itself really well to some variegated threads. So I'm going to use a bunch of um, my dyeing for cross stitch Kathy Davidson flosses for this. <clears throat> So when I said that that brown and um, gold kind of situation would probably work well, this is the pattern. So it's be well mini bouquet and it's super tiny if you do it on 40 count it's only two and a, two inches by two and a quarter super super tiny so super cool so those are three three stitches that I want to start I also want to do um, get started on at least one of the squares for um, one of the squares for my phone is buzzing so it's throwing me off <laughs> Uh, one of the squares for the Christmas stained glass Christmas from Ink Circles. So that has four pieces, two larger, two smaller, um, and I want to do all four of them eventually. Um, but I want to get started on at least one of those squares in May. And then there's also a Fleur Lee sort of pattern that I've shown you uh, from Ink Circles. I want to get started on that. So there's several other. I have a list of maybe 12. Um, I don't believe I'll start all 12 of those in May. Excuse me but I have started planning for mania. Mine will fall somewhere between mania and sania. Just saying, because I, I can't imagine, I can't imagine that my brain would not explode if I started 30 new projects, unless, 
unless they're projects that I can finish, and that may be a thing. Um, I don't think I'll, I certainly don't think I'll start a new project every day, but um, if I start a bunch of projects, it will be because I found some smaller pieces like this Be Well and Stitch. It's only 43 by 51. That's something I could probably finish in a day or two. So what I may do is there will be a handful of larger pieces that I start, um, but then other pieces I start will be things that I feel like I can finish during May as well. So um, keep keep an eye on this space for updates on that. So May is next week, people. Holy crap. We're already done, almost done with April. May 1st is next Friday. Holy crap. Which also means my birthday's coming up, which means that I get a holiday from working at home. <laughs> That feels weird, but seriously, I need some time off. Anyway, okay. So that is all the cross-stitching everything. That is 24 hours of cross-stitch and mania and be well and stitch and all the things. So now is the time where if you are only here for cross-stitch, you can go ahead and shut this off and I will see you next time. Um, if you're interested in nitty fiber stuff, then hang on and I will talk for a few more minutes about some other nitty stuff. So. <clears throat> da, 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 da. Just waiting for you to click away if you want to. <laughs> Actually, I'm just closing some stuff up and moving some stuff around. So, <clears throat> let's see. Knit Crate. It is that time of the month where we discuss Knit Crate. So, um, interesting things happening with Knit Crate. Uh, if you are already a member of Knit Crate, then you know that they had some issues or having some issues with the May subscription um, because they had everything planned out since last year but with warehouses shutting down and being unable to do this and that and the other completely understandable they've had to go with a plan b the plan b is interesting but not really my bag um, so the plan b and i'm just gonna if you don't want to hear this then skip ahead just a little bit um, some people want to be totally surprised and that's totally cool but if you want a little bit of advice from me, or not advice, but just a heads up from me so that you can skip if you would like, then listen in. <clears throat> so this next month, they're going to send you plain yarn, completely undyed yarn, and they're gonna send you a couple of packets of Kool-Aid. And they're gonna show you through, um, it's like chem knits on YouTube. Um, they're going to help you learn how to dye your own yarn. So that is totally something that I would love to do at some point. I definitely want to learn how to dye yarn. And what I'm hearing is that Kool-Aid is actually a really great thing to use for dye in some respects because it already has citric acid in it. You don't need vinegar as well. It's like an all-in-one kind of situation. You can get some really great speckling. All fantastic things. However, in my personal opinion, and this doesn't reflect the opinions of anybody on YouTube or anybody at Knit Crate or anybody other than me, um, but in my personal opinion, $25 for two skeins of plain yarn and two packets of Kool-Aid is far too much. Um, I can buy plain yarn and packets of Kool-Aid for significantly less than $25. So if you feel like I do, you may want to go on uh, before the deadline ends and skip your subscription for next month and wait to see what's going to happen in June. That is what I did. At some point, I will probably totally try that. I have access, anybody has access to Chemnitz on yarn, um, <clears throat> on yarn tube, <laughs> on YouTube. We all have access to Chemnitz um, and she has a video on her front page um, about using Kool-Aid to dye things. So you can totally watch that for free. Um, you, if you can access Kool-Aid, and I know if you're not in the States, that might be easier, might, might not be as easy. Um, but if you have access to Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid's cheap. And um, I'm pretty sure you can get relatively inexpensive, decent yarn, um, white yarn, undyed yarn um, for cheap too. So just, just FYI. If you'd rather have it all bundled up for you and shipped right to you, totally fine. Um, I No judgment on anybody who wants to do that. I think it's great. Me personally, not interested. Part of the reason that I pay what I pay for Knit Crate is to have curated hand dyed yarns. So when you're sending me stuff that I have to do all the work myself, I want to pay less. And since I'm not paying less, I'm just not going to do it. So um, that's my spiel on May's Knit Crate. Now April's Knit Crate is kind of cool, though <clears throat> I will preface it by saying it, it came in, so, and I totally get why they did this. So it came in this instead of the traditional box. Wow, that's really making the color wonky. 
<laughs> so it came in, in this uh, bubble wrap that looks is the same color as the traditional box. Um, but they didn't include the normal booklet because reasons. Um, and I'm not trying to be judgy about any of this. I mean, we're all trying to adjust to the situation in the world. Totally get it. Totally get it. Um, but it is, you know, some of these things are things that I love about Knit Crate. The little box it comes in, the little booklet, um, the little gift. And the little gift this time is useful, but I don't know. I don't like it as much. It's so it's a little packet of of like gentle detergent for use on hand dyed things. So, which is more an advertisement for this company than it is for anything else. So that's the little gift this week. <clears throat> and because it didn't come in a box, the the I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but these are kind of squished and not as fluffy as they should be. They're they're kind of mashed. Um, which makes me a little sad and they weren't wrapped in the tissue paper that they're usually in. It just, you know, the whole thing is kind of not bad. It just makes me a little sad. You know, you pay for certain things when you don't get those things, you're kind of like, mm. so, um, of course, before I put this away, let me actually comment on the color because the color I love, this is a nice deep purple with little sparklies. And I was going to order more, but I think I'm going to pass this time just because I don't know, as, as nice as this is, I don't know that I feel like it's as nice as some of the other yarns that they've sent. So um, the type of yarn, this is Uru, Uru Yarn is the company, Sugared Sport by Knit Crate. Um, and this is a 70% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, 10% Stellina, and Stellina I think is the little shiny bits. Um, <clears throat> sport weight, 300 yards, 100 grams. So you can actually machine wash this in a gentle cycle and then lay flat to dry. So um, it seems like it'd be a really versatile kind of yarn. I don't know. Maybe I will buy more. We'll see. We shall see. Um, and this this is the cool colorway. I almost always get the chill out colorway. Um, I think there was a pinky red, almost like the um, Blood Moon from the sock crate last month, um, was the for the Energize Me, and then. There was a gray silver for the naturals version. So that was Knit Crate this month. And I've already told you about Knit Crate for next month, just to, to give you a heads up. Um, if you didn't listen to that, that's totally fine. Hope you enjoy your Knit Crate. It's going to be awesome. Um, but let's see. So Knit Crate. Um, and I told you last time I had ordered this fantastic, gorgeous rainbow yarn from this dyer in Michigan. Couldn't remember her name. I know her name now. I received that yarn. It is gorgeous. Gorgeous. I can't even get over how gorgeous it is. So let me show you. Um, the Etsy seller, uh, the woman who dyes this, um, her business is Threads Threads by Megan Nicole, I believe is the business. Excuse me. Oh, she does have her own website, threadsbymeganicole.com, and also um, she's on Etsy, Threads by Megan Nicole. So, I'm waiting to build up suspense because I can't get over this yarn. Okay. Look! Oh my gosh! Okay. So, camera's obviously not going to do it justice. In some ways, you're going to have to take my word for it, but oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! It smells good, too. So... Um, obviously it's a little bit different than the pictures that she had, but only in the respect that hand dyed pieces, skeins are going to be different than each other. Um, they just don't, these are obviously the same dye lot. They look very, very similar. Um, so that is really the most important thing to me is that these look like they were dyed at the same time. Um, they are a little different than the picture, but like I said, it's mostly just from the fact that you cannot get the exact same dye pattern on, on skeins of yarn when you don't dye them at the same time. Well, you never get the exact same pattern, but you can't get even the most similar pattern if you're dyeing them at a separate time. But this is, is pretty true to, um, to the colorway that I was expecting. It's got this gorgeous teal green um, blue thing happening at the top and we got this gorgeous deep purple at the bottom and then all of the colors in between and this this particular yarn is 
the colorway is called rainbow light so the reason it's called rainbow light is because it's got some speckling so if you could see and the camera focus is awful but you can kind of see in here where we've got some darker deeper oranges and then there's some light almost white same with this pink up here so that's the speckling happening so there's rainbow bright um, is a non-speckled version of this that she has available and then the rainbow light is the speckled version so if you like this colorway check her out um, this particular i've chosen the sock slash fingering it's 75 percent merino wool superwash merino wool 25 percent nylon and um, this is a fantastic i love how teeny tiny this is this is going to make something fantastic i have no idea what um, but it's it's gonna be gorgeous and I cannot even wait um, <clears throat> so I have received that fantastic um, I mentioned earlier that I have found a semi-local to me um, hand dyer when I say semi-local she lives um, in um, up in northern Virginia um, so she's probably a couple hours away from me I live in more not technically central Virginia but I live close to Richmond um, so where she is in Stafford, Virginia is a couple hours away, but she is a Virginian hand dyeing wool and she does online classes as well. Her, her um, Facebook page is, oh, I just blanked. <laughs> Paisley, that's what it is. Paisley Pearl Yarn. Um, and she does hand dyed yarn. She has some fantastic colorways. She has this one called Electric Avenue because she has a whole 80s, set of colorways and this electric avenue is fantastic it's like purple and pink on one end and like blue and yellow on the it's oh it's gorgeous um so i believe she has her own website as well paisley per paisley pearl yarn.com i think i'll try to remember to link um but it's fantastic she's getting ready to start probably next week um a lace shawl class like a beginner's lace shawl class um and so the class itself if you want to tune in on facebook she does facebook lives um she said she does at least three of them over the course of the class to help you cast on help you learn the stitches she does some progress um things as well and i can't remember if she does facebook live or if she does zoom regardless she does like a virtual meeting kind of situation um so that folks can chat and learn and all this sort of stuff so it, and if you just do that without um, purchasing a kit or um you know if you bring your own stuff um then the class itself is fifty dollars but if you purchase a kit the class is free and the kits for this particular class you get a skein you get a skein large enough to do the entire shawl um, and it's going to be fingering weight um, yarn you get to pick any of the colors she has available on her website no holds bar anything no holds barred <laughs> so there are no colors that are off limit you just pick a color you message her and say i want to join the the lace shawl class this is the color that i want and the kit comes with the yarn comes with what i believe are some fantastic knitting needles um, i heard about them i think they're the same ones that um, heike at stone cold coffee crafts was talking about recently um, so i'm super excited about that comes with the knitting needles <clears throat> and some other stuff and like some extra goodies and stuff the kit all together costs 45 dollars, and you get the class for free so um, if you're in the states that's something that could probably be done if you want to message her um, like tomorrow or maybe over the weekend I don't know what her deadline is going to be um, but it is coming up like next she wants to ship next week so that the week after the class can start so if you're in the US that's something that can probably be accomplished if you're if you're not in the States I don't think the shipping will happen fast enough which doesn't mean you couldn't be in the class you just have to provide your own needles and and um, yarn and that sort of thing so um, something to check out so that's Paisley Pearl Yarn um, super excited about that so the last thing for yarn I already have um, I'm not going to show you the project that I already had on the needles I've done a couple more rows it doesn't look different <laughs> it's just slightly longer um, but I did put a new project on the needles so this pattern I got from or I learned about from Michelle G at Bendy Stitchy. Um, if you watch her BS Knits podcast, um, she's been working on this for the last couple of months. This is a mini skein infinity scarf. 
Um, I guess it's called a recipe because the designer is out of Australia. Um, this is a super inexpensive pattern on Ravelry. It is only a dollar US. So what's not to love? Um, and this is designed to be sort of like a, um, what do they call it? A stash? stash buster. Um, you can use scraps of yarn you have left over. Um, you can do it with uh, mini skeins that you get from whatever. Um, it calls for sock weight yarn and um, you just need I think a total of around 520 yards, something like that. Um, what I decided to do was use my, um, use that what were it, like seven mini skeins that I purchased from a chick that knits. Um, the skeins that I wasn't quite as happy about the, the intensity of the colors once I got them, I decided that this would be a great project for me to try a smaller weight yarn, smaller needles, a more complicated pattern, <clears throat> all that kind of stuff. So that is the pattern that I'm using. Um, and I'm going to lovingly call this project ARG. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. So um, you're not going to be able to see it very well. I don't have a lot on the needles yet. I had hoped to have more on the needles by now. Um, these are just telling me how many sets of these rows that I've done because otherwise I will not remember when I come back. So you, you can't hardly see what I have here. So <laughs> um, you can kind of see like here's the middle bit with that nifty detail that's starting in there and then we've got some we have some stockinette stitching so that's how far I've, and I just started this yesterday so the reason I want to call it the ARG project is because um, I started out with some bamboo knitting needles that I had gotten from um, somewhere Anyway, I had bamboo need knitting needles, excuse me. They were a size four, US size four, which makes them about three and a half millimeters. Well, the project calls for a size five, which is 3.75 millimeters. Um, so it doesn't seem like there would be that much issue. And this is a, I thought this was actually a fingering weight because it's so teeny tiny, but according to the website or the Etsy listing, this actually is, um, sock weight. So I'm I'm theoretically using the correct weight of yarn. I was using a smaller knitting needle and I was having the worst time. Um, not only would the stitches not slide on the bamboo at all, um, but it, my stitches were so tight and I think it had to do with how small those needles were. Um, I don't have any size five needles. I don't have any US size five. Um, I have some coming someday. Um, but we know how that is. However, the ones that I've ordered, the cats are fighting. That's what I'm looking at. Um, <clears throat> however, the ones that I've ordered are also bamboo. So chances are I'm going to have the same experience. They're not smooth. I don't like how the yarn sticks to them. And some of that may be this particular yarn too. I've not worked with this type of fiber. Um, I forget whether this is super wash merino. I can't remember. Um, but it's the, it's not quite as stretchy as some of the, as the acrylic yarns I'm used to. Um, and the needles were not at all slidey. So it was, it was murder. It was awful. So after two or three rows, I was like, okay, fine. Um, I had some larger, these are size six, US size six. So these are like four millimeters. Um, so I had these on hand. I was like, okay, fine. So I, I took the, took what I had off the needles, ripped it all out started again casting on thought I counted correctly got to the third row so you cast on you purl a whole row and then you start your actual you start your actual pattern um, so I got to the first pattern row and realized that I had um, cast on 10 fewer stitches than I was supposed to have <laughs> And I had still been struggling so much. So the, the yarn slides better on these. These are from Knit Picks. Um, and you can see they have a, this really cool design. So these are actually wood and they're interchangeable. Um, and the, the needle part is wood um, with this really pretty pattern. The other needles that I really like from Knit Picks are um, I think aluminum or they're nickel. They're some kind of super slidey metal and it is the most fantastic thing ever. So this is kind of making me decide that I just need to get the 
the full set of interchangeable nickel um, needles. But anyway, so I was still struggling. The stitches were too tight, which I think is me um, at that point, because um, the stitches are starting to loosen up now that I'm really trying to loosen them. Um, but I was still struggling, and then I realized I had 10 fewer stitches. And I almost ripped it out and started again. And of course, this was at almost 10 o'clock last night. Um, but I decided, you know what? If I can math this, if I can just math it, I can use what I have instead of starting completely over. So the pattern is basically a reflection. Um, you, you do a couple stitches over here, and then you do a whole bunch of knits, and then you do something here, and then you do the same number of knits and another couple stitches. So I basically just mathed it out to remove those 10 stitches that I had forgotten. Um, so I'm going to get the same pattern, it's just going to be slightly narrower. Um, but that is part of the reason that I have so much tail over here, because I measured it for the right number of stitches, and then I didn't actually do the right number of cast-ons. So anyway, all that is to say that I have this much completed. <laughs> and it has already caused so much frustration. And there's a part of me, the OCD part of me, um, that really wants to rip it out and do the correct number of stitches and start over. Um, but I'm trying to fight that part. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I hate to lose this much work, um, especially because I think the, it's supposed to be seven and a half inches wide. And to be honest, this seems um, like it should be about that. Yeah. Because I think from the bottom of my hand to the tip of my thumb is six inches. So that, that looks close to seven and a half inches to me. So, um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I'll tell you how it's going the next time we talk about nitty stuff. Um, so, okay, folks, I think that's about it. I have run up to an hour anyway. I was really trying hard not to, um, but apparently I'm very chatty. You know how it is. Um, <clears throat> so, but... That is all the things, uh, 24 hours of cross stitch marathon this weekend. If you're participating, let me know. Um, maybe we can check in with each other, um, see how we're all doing. Um, otherwise I will check in with you after 24 hours of cross stitch marathon and we'll see how things went. So hope you're all having a great day. I hope you're doing what you need to do to stay well and healthy and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great one.